All right, welcome back, everybody. Here is the next step on transferring your design onto the clay surface for your Sgraffito mask. And now we're gonna start talking about sculpting and attaching clay features onto the surface to create more of a three-dimensional form. Um, I'm just gonna be taking clay and modeling it basically in my hand to the size and shape that I'm looking for for certain features on the actual face. I'm gonna start with basically um, just a coil shape that's kind of turned into more of a carrot kind of form and then I'm going to start building that on top of uh, the nose area for uh, the three-dimensional look that I'm looking for for my nose. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to kind of sculpt things so you want to make sure that you're you're working with some of the clay that might you know eventually maybe uh, shave off a little bit of it at the end of this whole result but you want to try to get something that's close and kind of the ballpark figure of what you're trying to look at for your actual mask. So I'm just taking the time and kind of modeling and kind of smoothing uh, this coil shape into more of a nose centerpiece for the actual nose of uh, my mask and my design here. So I'm just gonna evaluate whether that's the right size or not. If I feel like it's pretty good, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start thinking about adding the nostrils on both sides. I'm just gonna take a kind of an oval shape of clay, and then I'm gonna cut with the wire just in half. So I have the exact same size on both sides. So the nostrils are kind of close to the same size as well before I put them on. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of letting these kind of go um, as part of the design right now, and I'm not gonna be attaching anything quite yet. I wanna make sure that their you know, proportion is everything is what I'm looking for, and then I'm gonna change it up after that. So I'm just modeling it, kind of forming it, designing kind of the little more of the details, kind of changing the curve and kind of the shape of each of the forms before I decide to continue working on uh, the nose. Uh, once I like it, then I'm gonna probably leave it for a second and then continue to work on other features that are gonna be kind of coming up off the surface to create that, that depth that we're looking for for a three-dimensional shape. Uh, I'm just kind of gonna start smoothing things out a little bit. I wanna be very careful about not pushing too hard onto the actual mask because I don't want this clay that's soft right now. I don't want it to get stuck to the actual mask because I'm gonna to need to pull it off and I'm gonna to need to attach it the right way with scoring and slipping. So now I'm working on the two brows over the eyes and I'm trying to use the same amount of clay for both sides and you wanna kind of measure things out. Use one as a guide before you start working on the other one and start laying them out, trying to figure out exactly how you wanna um, create that kind of depth that you're looking for. So I'm just gonna model it a little bit and kind of shape it and sculpt it while it's sitting on the mask so I can see what kind of shadow it's creating and how it's gonna actually react depending on how thick I want it to be. And I like the way this is looking, so I'm gonna probably just kind of work on the surface a little bit more without getting it completely stuck because I know I'm gonna to need to peel these back off in just a second and make sure that they sc are scored properly and they're going to be attached proper properly. So I'm going to peel them back in just a second and then I'm going to peel everything off just to make sure that I have uh, exactly what I want before I start to attach. And so you just want to take your time and really kind of form the clay while it's still soft. Take advantage of it while it's soft and be able to kind of model it. And then I'm going to start creating some actual reverse kind of depth by pushing down into the eye area where the socket would be because the eye would definitely go down into the face a little bit more. So I want to kind of press the slab down in there and then start thinking about uh, how it's going to uh, interact with the actual brow above it. So it's going to cast even more of a shadow when I get, when I get it close to where I want it. Once I do that, I'm going to be able to peel them off carefully without ruining the shape. Take your time, be careful, don't pull off the entire thing at one shot. You gotta work your way off so some areas might be stuck a little bit more than others. And then I'm gonna just score the entire outline and maybe a little bit bigger than uh, what I drew on the surface so that when I actually um, press the clay back into the, into the mask, it's gonna spread out and it's gonna be able to be blended into an area that's already been scored. So take my wire brush I crisscross across the whole thing and then I'm going to take each part that's part of the nose and I'm going to attach them to the center part of the nose. So each nostril is going to be attached properly. 
by scoring and slipping it on. Make sure I test it out, make sure I got the right side uh, connected to the right part of the nose. And then I want to score really well before I add any slip. And this clay is nice and soft, so you don't need to overdo it with the slip. You should be able to just put enough on the surface to get it to squish out and then try to work on uh, cleaning it up after it starts getting attached to the entire um, face or the entire mask. So I'm just going to kind of adjust a little bit here and there, make sure it's in the right spot, and then make sure the uh, back of it is actually scored again properly, the entire nose, and then the seam line in between the nose and the nostrils. I want to make sure there's no air pockets in there, so I might have to smooth it out a little bit because if we have an air pocket between the nose and the mask, uh, it could it could blow off the nose during the bisque firing, so we don't want that to happen. So make sure it's nice and flush, and it's not going to trap any air between the nose feature and the mask itself. Load it up with slip, and then work it back and forth until you get to the point where you have a nice, strong connection that you feel like you've worked from the middle out to the edges so that there's no air pockets stuck inside or in the back of that nose attached area. Once you've attached it, now you can really start to kind of redefine the form. And you can see how I'm kind of just using both fingers at the exact same time on opposite sides of each other and trying to make things as symmetrical as possible without um, crushing the clay. And if I need to, I'll take away some of the clay with the wire brush and then smooth it back out. That allows me to know that I've actually scored the wet clay back into the mask without it gonna, it's not gonna peel away and fall off during the drying process. So now I'm just kind of sculpting those nostrils, kind of redefining the edges where I want it to start and stop. And then I'm just kind of working on all those little details that are still gonna be, it's still gonna be a little bit more of a roughed out form, but it's gonna be a little bit more refined than it was before when I was just kind of modeling and trying to figure out exactly how big and how wide I wanted things to be. Now I'm testing these out one more time. I'm gonna score right around, uh, right in between each of the brows as well before I put them on, but I'm scoring the back of each of those brow areas, making sure it's got a nice crisscross pattern over the whole surface. And then I'm gonna bring that scored area all the way up into the into the side of the nose as well, right where it starts to kind of touch down on the bridge of the nose. Load these up with some slip, and then carefully readjust them back on. Make sure you kind of wiggle the whole uh, amount of clay back and forth a little bit, push any kind of air pockets out, and then start working on the seam around the edges. Do the same thing on the other side. Make sure if it's not looking like it's scored enough, go ahead and score it a little bit more. It's not going to hurt to score extra. It's actually going to be better. And then place it back in the area that you need it to be and start refining everything. So I can use my knife. I can use a needle tool. I can use a couple of the modeling, the wooden modeling tools that you have available uh, to help kind of sculpt what you need, but your fingers at this point are probably the best option right now. If you have some buildup in certain areas that you can't quite get your fingers to get in there and clean them up, definitely you can use some of the tools that you have uh, at your disposal uh, in your toolbox. So once they've, once they've been attached, now I can really take my time and start to really smooth things out, blend things out, and start to make things look like they belong together and connected together. And then I'm gonna change and adjust some of the angle of uh, certain features that have actually added onto the surface. Just notice I'm kind of working, uh, when I'm doing both sides, I'm kind of working at the same time, trying to keep things kind of lined up. So I'm using my left and my right hand at the same time, opposite of each other kind of working on keeping things a little bit more symmetrical. And you can see pushing down is going to make the make the slab kind of cave in a little bit. You can see how the pressure is pushing down and causing the eyebrow to kind of fold down too. And then you're just going to kind of work on some of those extra features and some of those 
refined part. So I'm just taking the side of my knife and kind of cleaning up the edges a little bit around the slip area. And I'll do more of this later when the clay firms up a little bit more. I'm just trying to even things out as we go. Now I'm just kind of redefining the nose. If it's a little too pointed or a little too round, I can take the time right now because it's nice and soft and I can actually adjust certain areas and take away certain parts of the clay that I don't need. Uh, I know I'm not going to need later. Uh, I will eventually start carving a lot more of this out when it's more leather hard, not while it's super soft like this straight out of the bag. It's going to take a little bit of time for that to actually happen before the clay is actually um, leather hard. So now I'm just kind of softening the edge on the brow. And then I'm going to kind of work around the outside edges too. Clean up this side as well on the right side. Remove some of the buildup that I don't want. And then kind of almost kind of like cut it down and then kind of pull it off the surface with the with the right tool. So this is basically just kind of the the starting point and I'm going to be using a lot more uh, features and a lot more clay on the surface to create more depth and more three-dimensional kind of forms and trying to make sure that I have a nice, um, not realistic exactly, but um, much more dynamic and interesting kind of uh, surface design to my drawing. And now I'm going to turn that drawing into a three-dimensional design on my mask. So it's always good to have your drawing near you. Sometimes I prop it right up and uh, right behind the mask. So I have a reference as I'm working and then I can kind of go back and forth between the drawing and the mask to see how, um, how close I am to what I first wanted to do with the actual design. And then when I'm done for the day, make sure you wrap it up carefully. Keep things folded over the top so it doesn't dry out. You want to keep that clay as soft as you can for quite a while now. And then uh, make sure you have another bag that you can put the entire mask inside of. And then make sure that bag doesn't open up while you have it wrapped up ready to go for the next day. And I think that's it. All right, good luck. Clean out your stuff and then be ready for the next day.